Do we have any, any questions from the couple nights of teachings inshaAllah? As Salaamu Alaykum dear Shaykh Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah Can we send help to our loved ones through our meditation, madad or is it something unachievable for us? Is sending madad only for the shaykh? Pardon my ignorance. Sending madad? You can't give what you don't have. <coughs> the importance of praying, everyone should be praying for people they love and giving the gift of their good deeds to their descendants. And that's the Il Sharaf al Nabi alayhi wa ashabi kiram. وَلَمَا شَيْهِينَ فِي تَرِكَةَ نَشْبَنْدِيَةَ الْعَلِيَّةَ The idah is a, is a gift to the souls of Prophet to the Ashab al-Nabi, Ahl al-Bayt and to our shaykhs and you can also ask for the, your parents and loved ones to be dressed by the, the beatific lights from these good actions that Allah find goodness in them and dress them from that. The madad is a, is a means in which to seek support and to build oneself spiritually to make the connection. So that, that's something separate of an issue to give madad to someone means then you built yourself and you're going to go now spiritually support them. So that's, that's a different… praying for people and ask that the good reward of what you've done to go to them, you can sponsor well and that water dresses the descendants whomever you're asking. This is Sadiqah Jariyah from the hadith of Prophet that these good deeds that we can do, you contribute to our masjid, you teach the uloom, spread the uloom, buy books and distribute them out and you're spreading these Divinely knowledges, those are a reward that goes eternally upon the soul of the descendants. So there's so many ways Islamically bring food to a mafil, go out and feed the poor for the sake of your loved ones, parents, any of these things that we want to do. Those are the madad in which Allah sends a spiritual relief and take away difficulty and all these blessings become dressed upon them inshaAllah. And the good actions of children are presented to Divinely Presence presented to Allah presented to Sayyidina Muhammad So that also achieves the nazar, so those are all important. <clears throat> As Salaamu Alaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam Could you please elaborate on what it means to be on and to be off? I think uh, last night we was, that was pretty elaborate. <laughs> the whole talk about being on and off and learning how to 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 make the signal to go off. That from the example of the shaykhs is that when they talk and when they teach it's an on state for them that they're connecting their heart and through that connection, through their training in their heart that this fires, this light, this, this connection to reach out for themselves and to the students. Then they understand that when they're off is then to be more relaxed with people and easier to approach. So when you do your practices, you go, you meditate, you do your practices and coming back into the presence of your family, be soft, calm down, interact with them like normal, not like you're special, you just did practices and everybody has to do zikr because you just came out of the room doing zikr. So all of these things that people want to make a state of like, I'm in such a state of energy and piety and everyone has to do that. So it's a matter of you do the practices and when we are amongst people, again don't show anything, be casual, be sort of common and, and lowering one's wing. And everybody will have different examples in their life in which to hide their practices, not show the practices, interact with family members, with children, with, with community members and not to be on in front of them. Because you did a lot of practices, now go to the mosque and, and be like you're, you're very heavy with energies and practices and you're going to attract the wrong energy and better to take a path of humility in which we show ourselves to be off and somebody look and say, there's nobody. 
As Salaamu Ya Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam Wa Rahmatullah The power and energy that Allah is dressing us from the zikr and meditations is the power, a supernatural power that is given for protection against the Dajjal in the end times? It's a power from Allah's oceans of rahmah and Allah always dressing the servant from these rahmah, from these blessings, from these energies, from these fires, these emanations. So while praising upon Allah all of Allah's tajallis and blessings dress and move towards the soul of that individual praising upon Sayyidina Muhammad then the Muhammadan realities begin to move towards the soul of the individual. Then there's their own spiritual practices and, and their meditations and associations again bring these energies upon the soul. Allah is then in charge of how much He wants to turn the dial based on what's necessary. So everyone according to what's necessary, if there's no necessity for an excessive amount of energy to open up but the student is open and is capable then Allah doesn't need to turn the dial up for no purpose. It's when things are necessary then it has to be ready. That's why you prepare all your switches and all your lines and all your cables. So that when Allah wants to send the electricity, the energy, the fires that the person is built and ready. So imagine you want power to come into the house but you didn't construct any outlets, you don't have a power box with breakers and lines and nothing but you're expecting energy to come into the house. So this is again the, the practices that we're doing these practices and most are doing it in good times and in good locations in a good life they build themselves, build themselves. Now you've built the whole electrical system, you've built the energy capabilities and capacity within yourself. When Allah wants to flip the switch that's up to Allah When difficulty comes the switch may come. So there are examples, we have an example of an individual that I don't know we've talked before about it. We call him Muhammad Argentini and uh, he was in Argentina and he was interested in Sufism. This is even before meeting the shaykhs because these are ancient predestinies. You wanting to meet the shaykh is not you wanting to meet the shaykh, Allah put that in your heart, go find your shaykh. So it's already been pre-written, it's not your cleverness or my cleverness that we found this way, Allah wrote it for us that you would be on this turuq and this is why we say it's a great ni'mat and great blessing. Muhammad Argentini was in Argentina and he was coming into his heart to enter into Islam and he was going everywhere trying to find where am I going to go to Islam and I feel I want to be amongst the Sufis, there's no Sufis at that time. And he was going to different places and he went to a political office of a group from the Middle East, we'll leave it at that. Mm -hmm. And I can't, it, it can't go too much into it. But he went and these people were bizarre, they acted very bizarre, they, they claimed to be Muslim, they had all sorts of weird practices, weird energy until one time he entered to a room with two individuals and their reality came out and it was demonic and at that time he felt their demonic energy actually grab him and was going to cause harm to him. He said at that moment later because he came and eventually found a center in Los Angeles, our center and he came and described his story and we took him to Maulana and he described the story and he says, this is true. At that time he says, I hadn't met anyone but I was under attack. And as soon as I was under attack and I thought these people are going to cause great harm to me. So two shaykhs appeared in my vision and I saw the shaykhs in there. As soon as they appeared I could speak perfect Arabic. He had no Arabic background, he was trying to convert to Islam. As soon as, they, as, soon as <laughs> they appeared I began to recite perfect Arabic and as I'm reciting my energy is grabbing these two people and lifting them and choking them with no hands, just his Arabic is reciting and beginning to choke these two people until they were going to fall into harm just by his spiritual energy. 
At that time the shaykhs said, no permission, Muhammad released them. And he released and he ran out the door and he ran. He said, from that time I don't, they didn't appear again, they appeared only for that instant and I ran. But I knew at that time this was something that God wanted me to experience and he took his path to find the shaykhs. He eventually ended up in Los Angeles, he ended up in our center in Los Angeles and he began to describe this story to us. I said, wow two shaykhs, okay let me show you the pictures of our shaykhs, so the pictures, these are the shaykhs, these are the shaykhs. And he was so excited, told the story to everyone, then we took him to Maulana up in San Francisco, he described the story to everybody there and that was then the, the history of that event. So Allah can support anyone whenever Allah wants. So it can be extraordinary with the extraordinary or the most common is to practice it. Put the discipline of practicing, doing these practices, doing these so that when a rainy day comes you're ready. And Allah flip the switch and how and, and, and which way things will happen can't be imagined, can't be understood. We said we've even had people who come and describe that now training is beginning. So they came to this person and they trained that when the shaykh taught you about difficult days and food and the person had a, a particular concern that, how are we going to have food when you know things become horrific? And then they came to this person between dreamlike and vision that, don't worry from the jinn kingdom we'll come and show you our way. And then they showed that they take a asa that had no grounding, they say, you put this wood into the ground and you begin to recite what we tell you to recite and by next morning the food that you need will be appearing of all natural whatever comes from Allah Not like a kebab already cooked but what you need of vegetables to sustain yourself will come. From their realm they'll bring their knowledges and uloom to save whom Allah wants to be saved. So we can't even begin to imagine this heavenly kingdom that we operate now in cause and effect. Those days is not cause and effect, it's completely Allah's will. It's not a matter of, you do this you get that. When Allah flips the switch and Dajjal begins his movement then Allah flipped the switch and heaven the kingdom is ignited inshaAllah. <coughs> As Salaamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuhu dear Shaykh Wa Alaikum As Salaam wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuhu Thank you so much Sayyidi. What is the adab way praises to ask forgiving from Sayyidina Muhammad The adab is all these characters that we're describing, making your istighfar, astaghfirullah al-azeem wa tubu ilayhi. And we have Sultan al-istighfar on the app. And uh, important to ask istighfar from Astaghfirullah al-Azim that the Azim in which Allah obliterate everything and that we are like an epsilon of nothingness in that Divinely Presence. It's not difficult for Allah just wipe it away. As we make istighfar it's like a shower, we become clean and purified and then we begin to make salawat upon Sayyidina Muhammad and that becomes then the salawat, the durood, keep making the salawat. And then when we talk about the muraqabah and making the heart and connecting the heart, the importance is to see ourselves at Rosa Sharif. It's to see ourselves in Medina. Anyone can Google, say, I've never been, but you Google. The in Google it would be called the Rosa Sharif or the huh? Muhajjah Sharif on Medina to Munawwara until you see the beautiful golden gate of where the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad is residing, you see yourself in that presence holding to the gate and begging his forgiveness. That I'm asking you and begging you for my forgiveness, everything that I've done wrong and I know that I did wrong, I'm begging your forgiveness. All that I did wrong that I don't know was wrong, I'm begging your forgiveness. It's building an immense relationship of love and muhabbat with the reality of Prophet and seeing that our, our head upon his holy sandal 
You see a beautific sandal with a beautific foot that I don't need to look for the face, I don't need to ask from my ego these things. My place inshaAllah to be under your feet and under your sandal, that let me to keep my feet at your sandal and your beautific feet that please forgive me, forgive me what I did wrong from whatever you gave to me of these lights and these blessings and where I came short, forgive me and intercede for me. And then that builds a, a very humble and loving relationship with Sayyidina Muhammad And this was the way of all awliyaullah that they saw themselves always at the foot and the qadam of Sayyidina Muhammad that they're kissing the feet, keeping their, their face on the holy feet and that his foot to be always over their head and controlling them and controlling their bad characteristics and that their madad and support of Sayyidina Muhammad to be dressing and blessing them inshaAllah. And that makes that meditation to be very real, very powerful, inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Beloved Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam uh, Forgive me for my ignorance. What does it mean to penalize oneself when you realize you are repeatedly doing the same mistake again in muhasaba? Yeah, if, it's, if you're doing sins, we've given other talks that you have to give zakat. Z- when the concept of zakat, the concept of sadaqah, the concept of giving, zaki means to purify. What Allah wants us to understand is when you're overridden with bacteria, with, with bad characteristics, with bad energy, what happens? Your entire being is being governed by this bad energy, hence it pushes you to do bad things and make bad choices because what's in you is controlling what's out of you. So the inside controls outside. So when these things are inside by the rizq, by the food, by the drink, by the people, the places, everywhere we're going like a bus, you picked up all these crazy energies, that inside actually controls what your hands are going to do, what your lips are going to say, the character and the actions that you're going to to convey. So this is a, a deep importance. So once you begin to purify yourself, one of the greatest purifiers Allah gave is what? Zakat. So when you give it should be cleansing, Allah nothing is lost in Allah's way. Whatever you give Allah will replace it with good characteristic. So that becomes a means in which the servant to reach to very pious states. So that's why the, the talk of all of these sahabi was on their giving and their generosity. So what distinguished Sayyidina Umar from Sayyidina Abu Bakr as Siddiq was what? The giving. Sayyidina Umar the hadith, that's how we have this whole hadith of, of love. When Sayyidina Umar came and, and gave and Prophet mentioned, Umar you gave one amount alhamdulillah but what Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq gave, he gave everything. And when Prophet asked, what did you give? He said, give everything. What did you leave for your family? He said, La Allah Muhammadun Rasulullah That distinguished the rank of their realities, that one whom gives everything, that doesn't mean empty your accounts and things but these are holy sahaba so they have to be the best of examples for us to want to understand. So then Prophet described and used that as a teaching that he surpasses everyone because of this reality and that, Ya Umar you have to love me more than you love yourself, your sons, your family, your fathers, everything has to be the love of Sayyidina Muhammad By that reality of that event Prophet described and brought out that reality, you have to love me more than you love yourself. So that was a station of iman which the other groups they don't want to mention that that's iman. Say, what is iman? So, iman is to, to pray, to do your zakat, to, ha- to go for hajj and to do your Ramadan. So no, iman was that you had to love Sayyidina Muhammad more than you love yourself, take care of yourself, do for yourself, do first for Sayyidina Muhammad 
So that's, that has a tremendous blessing, a tremendous reality and take many difficulties away. And we said in Surat Al-Munafiq in Rajab the immensity of the Ayat Al-Kareem in which Allah describes a servant who died and asks Allah Divine the Presence that, Ya Rabbi grant me to go back. And so, go back for what? To go back and give all my wealth away so that I can be from Salihin. Not that I can go back and do 10 hajj, not that I can go back and do 1000 rakah but, Ya Rabbi let me go back to clean out the accounts and that I don't meet you with that reality and that I be granted to be from Salihin inshaAllah. So these are all the realities in which to leave these bad characteristics if they're not going. So we do the salawats, we do the zikrs, we do the meditation. The meditation has an immense power that when the fires begins to come it comes with a tremendous energy that begins to dress the heart, bless the heart and that pushes away many, many negativities inshaAllah. So it's a whole system that if we work it, it works very well inshaAllah. As Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah. How to develop or increase certainty in our heart? Certainty and yaqeen is from the talks that we have from the mutaqeen and how to, to gain the yaqeen of all the senses. So it means the, the muraqabah, the meditation has the immensity of the energy and opening the lights of malakut. The oceans of certainty are not dunya. If your eyes are just dunya and you're a very sharp reader from dunya that has nothing to do with yaqeen. Yaqeen is that your heart is open, the energy in the heart is open and that you're seeing with the light of the heart. That can only be achieved through these muraqabah, through the practices of the tafakkur and all the contemplation. So that when they're making their connection, making their connection then they begin to train, that begin to perfect your ears means pay attention to what you're listening and not listening to. Then they perfect their eyes, perfect on what you're looking at, stop looking and purify your heart. Your eyes are taking in all of these. So mutaqeen they are purified and have yaqeen of all their senses and that's why Allah opens Holy Qur'an with their reality, alif, lam, meem, dhalika al-kitab illa rayba fi fa khudan al-mutaqeen. So this Qur'an is not for common people, it's understanding. It opens from Surat al-Fatiha, it opens with alif, lam, meem, dhalika al-kitab. That this book has no crookedness and that's the common teach. This book is actually Sayyidina Muhammad and Hudan al-Mutaqeen that Prophet is the, is the guidance for the mutaqeen. So means they're being guided by the Kitabullah which is the reality, the soul of Sayyidina Muhammad How can you be guided if your ear's not guided? How could you be guided if, if your heart is not guided? How could you be guided if you're smoking and your breath is not guided? Now I've seen places say, oh there's a big chalaba, what do they call these Turkish ones? Ch ch chubaba, chala? Chalavi, chalavi, yeah. And they were smoking. They go to Indonesia and they're smoking. So there's something off in that. So it means every part of their sense has to be under discipline. Their ears have to be continuously disciplined, cleansed, not listening to people but listening to their heart. Can you imagine if all day long they listen to the advice of people? That's why many times people come around shaykhs and they say, he doesn't like listen to us because he's not supposed to. If he listened to you then he would be taking guidance from you and not from above. And that's why the characteristic of Sayyidina Muhammad was Samina. That they hear and they obey and that don't ask Prophet to listen to you but ask Prophet to gaze at you. So the companions if they would dare to say, listen to me I have to talk to you but Allah corrects it, don't know, his, his, his listening is for the Divinely Presence. What you are in need of is his nazar his holy lights to come and dress you and bless you in life. So the same is in the understandings. Is that 
to perfect our ears, perfect all these senses for the Divine, for the Divinely lights. And that's why then they work on each of the different steps and it's in the levels of the heart. How to purify your heart and then you one day begin to start practicing your hearing. And you practice, practice that I don't need to hear people, I need to hear my conscience. Well how are you going to hear your conscience if you never sit and make tafakkur? Because there's an inner voice wants to talk to you but you never want to sit and listen to them. How are you going to see if you don't sit one day and close your eyes? And shaitan knows it because he's bringing out the tech to destroy it, right? So now kids are sitting for at least three hours on TikTok, three, four hours just a why? So that they never close their eyes to even think about their life, their heart, their existence. And that's all shaitan wants, don't you dare stop because if you should stop you'll realize how much you're in a bad situation. And that's why Allah then is countering, no, no, teach them, close their eyes. As soon as you close your eyes, what's the purpose of my life? Where am I headed with this life of mine? And so that's all the senses inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al Mustafa wa basiri Surat al Fatiha. Click the link now to subscribe.